time for the Curtis Riggs Show. The head coach of the Sioux Ball Storm. The Curtis Riggs Show on FM 98.1. AM 1230 KWSN and KWSN.com. The Curtis Rick Show being brought to you by Sioux Falls Specialty Hospital and by Orthopedic Institute. Now, here's your host of the Curtis Rick Show, the voice of the Sioux Falls Storm, Rich Rosti. And good afternoon and hi, everybody. I'm Rich Rosti. Welcome to the Curtis Rick Show. Coming up on the show, we'll be talking to the head coach, of the storm, Curtis Riggs, about the games around the IFL last weekend. And there were a couple of dandies. And during our second segment with Coach Riggs, we'll talk about the storm's win over Green Bay last Friday, 60-21. to 21. Then also on the show, we'll be talking with Jim Loria in a special segment reflecting on his time with the Sioux Falls Storm as Jim moves on uh, following this season to other adventures. Then also on the show, we'll be... Giving some tickets away, courtesy of Lewis Pharmacies. And then the next Storm home game is this coming Friday. Those tickets will be available for that uh, game on Friday as the Storm takes on the Iowa Barnstormers. And that's going to be just a hugely important ball game. And we'll talk to Coach Riggs about the Barnstormers. Then also, tonight, Canaries Baseball at 6.55 p.m. Now, the Curtis Riggs Show is proudly presented each week by the official Storm Sports Medicine Providers. Sioux Falls Specialty Hospital, the Storm Official Healthcare Team, and the only five-star rated hospital in Sioux Falls. And then also by Orthopedic Institute, the one to trust. So coming up next, the head coach of the Sioux Falls Storm, Curtis Riggs. And you're listening to the Curtis Riggs Show right here on FM 98.1, 1230 Sports Radio, KWSN. Fans, join the storm. The biggest difference in Boyer and other truck dealerships is the fact that we're an employee-owned company. From the front of the building with the sales to the back of the building with service and parts, you're dealing with an owner of the company. We have the smallest vehicles all the way up to the biggest vehicles. We're a truck dealer by heart and by design. We deal in the whole gamut of the vehicles. There's not a lot of dealers that do that. But this is a relationship business and I enjoy the relationships a lot. If you like to bowl, roll on into Eastway Bowl. Hey, wait a minute. Eastway Bowl is more than just bowling. It's a full of fun entertainment center. There's many things to do. Games, games, and more games, plus food, great food. Come into our full-service sports bar and grill where you'll find terrific drinks with our popular late-night specials. Watch all your favorite sporting events at Eastway. Visit our website to make your bowling reservations and find out more about the full fun experience. Eastway Bowl and Entertainment Center, where there's something for everyone. You're listening to The Curtis Riggs Show, brought to you by Sioux Falls Specialty Hospital and by Orthopedic Institute on 98.1, 1230 Sports Radio, KWSN. Back to the show, here's Rich Rosti. And each week, our opening interview with the Storm Head Coach Curtis Riggs is brought to you by the good folks over at Good Sense Deli Fresh Subs. Good Sense Deli Fresh Subs sponsors since day one. And come see what fresh really is, and they deliver anywhere in Sioux Falls. And their subs are just Breder. He is the head coach of the Sioux Falls Storm, Curtis Riggs. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm good. I'm good, Rich. How are you? Good. It seems like it's been a long time since Friday night when we were up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yeah, it's, it's <clears throat> weird, but very nice having a full weekend. Get through the graduation of your son, Peyton? We made it. Yeah, we had family, a lot of family here, and um, we got through it, and uh, and... and we just move on. It's amazing how life just keeps going. <laughs> did you have enough food? We did. You know, we got plenty of dessert, so I can, I'd can. i be happy to bring some by <laughs> for, for you and Sue if you'd like. <laughs> okay, that'd be great. I know that was yeah. one thing that we talked about on the on the trip up there. There's always things that are going on in the, the household about getting ready for a graduation and all the worry about how things are going to go. Then after it's all said and done, you kind of wonder, well, what were we worried about? Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you put so much concern and um, thought and overthought uh, in everything. And then, yeah, afterwards you're like, wow, that was a lot of work for two hours. <laughs> um, and now we're done. Then you're done. Well, there was a couple games going on besides the Sioux Falls Storm game. The Storm played on Friday night, defeated Green Bay 60-21. to We'll talk more about that in the next segment. But there was a couple other games. It was the Cedar Rapids Titans get their second win of the season over the Nebraska Danger. They win 33-26. to 26. 
and uh, Nebraska in an eight-game losing streak. Yeah, they, uh, you know, it's 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 crazy because um, their last win was against Iowa, who's you know the hottest team in the league now. Yeah. Um, but uh, they just uh, they're struggling, and and Cedar Rapids, I mean, they play hard. They could get you. Um, I I didn't watch any of the game, but I definitely wasn't surprised when I when I saw the score though. The Titans quarterback Jake Medlock. 22 of 26, very efficient passing, 249 yards. He had five passing touchdowns, no interceptions. Cedar Rapids led throughout the entire game, and they get the win 33-26 to over Nebraska. The other game that was going on this weekend, very interesting game down in Des Moines, Iowa hosting Arizona, and Iowa wound up with the win 41-38. to It was all Arizona the first half. They were leading at halftime. 31-27. In the second half, only three touchdowns were scored, two by Iowa, only one for Arizona. The, and it was just kind of surprising to me about the low score in that contest. Well, especially after seeing how they played last time. Um, you know, I, I thought Arizona came out really sharp and had a, a chance to, to kind of pull away just a little bit to put a little more pressure on Iowa. And the running back dropped a fourth down. He, yes. he would have had a first down easily. And the quarterback, who I think has really played well, I, I think he's the rookie of the year in, in the league um, for Arizona. He he put it right on the running back. Should have been caught. Would have been a first down. Um, and Arizona's very good when they get inside that five-yard line area. Uh, and then, you, you know, Iowa came out, scored, and um, – they just uh, – Drew's playing very well. When he runs, he's so difficult to bring down. Uh, he he seems to extend plays, and then when he just runs, he's just as effective as any running back in the league. But he has a tremendous amount of carries. He had 26 carries in that game. He had 129 yards of rushing, two rushing touchdowns. Uh, he accounted for – well, the team had about 200 yards in total offense. He had 129 of them himself. That takes a toll on a quarterback, even though he's a big kid, very athletic. That's a long ball game for a quarterback. It is, yeah, and he's not built like a Jamal Sewell. I no. mean, you know, Jamal is a big individual, but uh, Drew, you know, he he actually came in lighter this year. That's what I've noticed is he he was lighter, and um, I think he's looked faster. But you're right; he does he takes a lot of hits and. Um, you know, when you're winning, you don't notice those. Mm-hmm. Or when you're you're always getting big plays, you don't notice them. Um, but it, so far, no one's been able to wear them down. So hopefully next week we can. I was surprised that uh, Darrell Monroe for Arizona only carried the ball five times. Uh, he had and, one touchdown. And, and I think, you know, I, I was looking at it. I think he only carried it one time in the second half. That's about I, right. I, yeah, I was shocked by that because when he did carry it, Good things happen, and mm-hmm. you know I think he's the. I think those two, Monroe and, and Drew, are far and away. It's it's one of those two for MVP, and I think now Drew's kind of pulled away because Monroe has missed some games. Um, I think those two have been the two biggest difference makers. I think Monroe is way above this league. I think he, I think he. I said earlier on on Craig and John that. I think he is better than when Fred Jackson was in, in the IFL. I just think he he's so imposing. He's he's just so physically dominating. But that when he gets out in the open field, he can run away from people too. And um, there's not a lot of backs. And he has pretty good hands too for his size. So, uh, but I think Drew is kind of separated from him as the MVP this year. I was watching the game. I was actually at the game, and I was you know paying attention to him, and I was thinking to myself, is he not totally back to full strength after his injury? Were they saving him? Uh, I just had real questions about why that uh, Coach Guy did not have Monroe more in the offensive scheme of things. Yeah, and, and you got to wonder if, if that ankle, if, if that was some of it. But, you know, luckily for everyone else in the league, they have a bye this week um, for him to just rest it some more. So that's awesome. So I'm sure he'll come into the playoffs <laughs> 100%. Full bore. Iowa, on the other hand, 
seven-game winning streak. They are the team to beat right now. Drew Powell, outstanding quarterback. We'll talk more about uh, uh, Iowa Barnstormers a little bit later in the broadcast because they are the uh, next opponent for the Sioux Falls Storm uh, coming up this Friday night as the Sioux Falls Storm going to be entertaining the Iowa Barnstormers in a huge ball game. Games remaining around the league, Iowa hosting uh, or Iowa's at Sioux Falls, then they'll host Cedar Rapids. Arizona has a bye this week. Then they're going to be at Nebraska. Sioux Falls host Iowa. Then Green Bay also at home. Cedar Rapids is going to be at Green Bay and at Iowa. Green Bay is going to be hosting Cedar Rapids and coming here to Sioux Falls. Nebraska has a bye. Then they'll be hosting Arizona. One question about that I have for you, and maybe you know or don't know, there was one game that was postponed and that was between Cedar Rapids and Green Bay. The very, you know, the numbers, I've started to crunch the numbers as far as playoff strength, the schedule, and things like that. One game can make a difference. And the possibility that, you know, Green Bay or Cedar Rapids would come up with three wins. One of them will have three wins. What would they ever do as far as a league? Would they ever coin toss that other game to be able to come up with a maybe fourth win so that team could maybe oust Nebraska in the playoffs? Yeah, I, I have heard nothing. That's a, a great question. Um, it, you know, I think knowing how the teams have fared against each other, I think Green Bay, if they tied Nebraska, they would have the tiebreaker on, on Nebraska. That is exactly um, right. Yeah, and then I think Cedar Rapids – Nebraska would have the tiebreaker on them. That's exactly right. So the only team um, that could qualify would be Green Bay. But but you're right. I mean, if, if they beat, who, who did you say, Cedar, Cedar Rapids? Rapids? Yeah. Yeah, and, um, you, you know, they would have our game, but do they make up that, that last game? I mean, I, I know if, I, if I'm Green Bay, I'm saying we want that game or – yeah, do a coin flip or something, um, because it, you know we it, this game needs to be made up because it has playoff implications. I think early on they thought it's not going to, mm-hmm. um, but they also probably didn't realize Nebraska would would be on this losing streak they've been on. Well, I went through the strength of schedule for the entire season, doing the different scenarios, and if the Sioux Falls Storm defeats Iowa this weekend, and Green Bay, well, put it this way, Green Bay Storm plays them twice. The way the strength of schedule is right now, Iowa has it at 452, followed by Arizona at 418.6. The Storm is at 417.1. If Green Bay would be, would they, if they would beat Cedar Rapids and win the coin toss, if there would be such a thing, that would change the Storm's winning percentage up to 422.8, which would be greater than Arizona's. So travel, playoffs, seedings, everything could depend upon something to that effect. Yeah, I, I have no idea how you figured that out. And um, uh, I have no idea what the league is going to decide with this, too. Yeah. I, um, you know, Coach Guy actually uh, reached out to me, and I was like, I, I don't have any idea. You know, I assume Iowa would have the edge because they played you and I three times. That's right. And we only played each other twice. Um, but then I, I thought, you know, Arizona and I uh, and Sioux Falls played pretty much the same schedule, but I think there was some variation. Now, you know, one thing that should come into play Arizona and Iowa got an extra home game. They 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 had eight home games and six road games. Mm-hmm. So strength of schedule, playing on the road should also factor in on strength of schedule. Um, and I don't think that's been brought up at all. Uh, you, you know, having an extra home game is a distinct advantage. I know if if I'm looking at our schedule, we hey. We'd love to have an extra home game yep. and one less road game, but um, who knows, Rich? You know, I, I, I just, uh, I know we're we're fired up to have another chance at, at a team that beat us this year and and a team that we really came out and played poorly against, and some of that was 
our doing, and a lot of it was what they did to us. And so hopefully we can come out and play better football. And the whole thing about it is everything that I figured out is a mute point because right now the whole thing hinges on the game Friday night, and we'll talk about the Iowa Barnstormers a little bit later on the broadcast. All right. Very good. He is the head coach of the Sioux Falls Storm, Curtis Riggs. And when we come back, we'll talk about the game up in Green Bay for just a little while. Jim Laurie is still to come. All this on the Curtis Riggs Show. This segment brought to you by Good Sense Deli Fresh Subs. They deliver anywhere in Sioux Falls, and their subs are just better. We'll be back right after this. The Sheraton Sioux Falls. The Rostys wanted their new house to be unique, so they went back to Fireplace Pros. The upstairs is traditional, but the downstairs is very modern. They are delighted. We wanted a different look and feel within our house, and Fireplace Pros, as always, helped us make it happen. They're the best. Visit us on the web or stop by your nearest Heat & Glow or Heat Later dealer. Fireplace Pros, Heat & Glow, and Heat Later. You're going to love the way your home feels. You're listening to The Curtis Riggs Show, brought to you by Sioux Falls Specialty Hospital and by Orthopedic Institute on 98.1, 1230 Sports Radio, KWSN. Back to the show. Here's Rich Rosti. And the Storm Weekly Game Recap is brought to you by Eastway Bowl, the perfect spot for family fun. Eastway Sports Lounge, the official Storm, Storm Road Game Viewing Party host for all stand fans. They've been great sponsors for many years. We appreciate them very much. Eastway Bowl and Eastway Lounge. He is the head coach of the Sioux Falls Storm, Curtis Riggs. Coach, we go up to Green Bay, Wisconsin for the second time this year. Beautiful up there this time of year. Storm come away with a win, 60-21. Uh, to 21. And uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about that game, but tell us what's your thoughts about getting that win up there in Green Bay. Uh, you know, I think after the first quarter, and, and the first quarter wasn't terrible defensively i thought we did some pretty good things but after that quarter i thought we played three of the best quarters we've probably played all season i thought um we we really got after them and it started in the second quarter and then the third quarter we came out and just erupted and, and started with a, a kick return for a touchdown a new player for the sioux falls storm mike tater with a out with a shoulder injury you brought in damon powell and uh, he introduced himself to the uh, Sioux Falls Storm fans pretty well with that kick return for a touchdown to start the third quarter. Well, and it's something that we've desperately missed since you know we traded Daniel Lindsay. Um, was a guy that just caught it and went. You know, not someone back there dancing. Um, you you got to hit it. You, the windows are so limited on the kick return game, and mm -hmm. if you dance at all, you lose it. Um, and and. With his speed, if, if he can hit that crease, he, he's going to have a shot. Storm outscored Green Bay 28 to nothing in the third quarter. In the first half, the defense forces four uh, field goal attempts. All four were missed by Green Bay. Uh, you had a 53 to zero scoring run. Uh, everything just uh, your defense stopped them. Got a turnover, either a fumble or downs, and then your offense uh, converted to touchdowns and. And that's Storm football at its finest. Yeah, I mean, taking advantage of the other team's mistakes and, and just being efficient. And um, I think we did a lot of great things. And the thing is, you get to see them again in a couple of weeks. We do. And, you know, it, I, I'm sure it'll be a different game, but that game's definitely going to be in the back of their minds. And if we could come out and just start to initiate what we, we finished with up there, uh, it could very easily turn that same direction. How about that game springboarding to the game coming up on Friday? Well, it's something we desperately needed, Rich. I mean, you know, every game it seems like it's it's a battle for us, and, and you go in just we got a lot of things we can fix, you know, which is great, but pretty soon you're like, you know, it would be good to come in with some momentum. Uh -huh. And I, I think that's the best thing from that game is it, it lets us go into this game with some momentum, some excitement, knowing that we did some good things and um, knowing that uh, we're motivated and ready to go and, and playing decent football. Well, we'll talk about that important game coming up against the Iowa Barnstormers. That's Friday night. And, Coach, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. All right. Thanks, Rich. He is the head coach of the Sioux Falls Storm, Curtis Riggs, and the Storm Weekly Game Recap is brought to you by Eastway Bowl, the perfect spot for family fun. Eastway Sports Lounge, the official Storm 
road game viewing party hosts, and they've been great fans and great supporters of the Sioux Falls Storm for a very long time. This is the Curtis Riggs Show. Coming up next, Jim Loria. And you're listening to the Curtis Riggs Show right here on FM 98.1 AM 1230 Sports Radio, KWSN. I'm Bill Lavin. Your body is a complex arrangement of bone and tissue that requires only the best to maintain it. At Orthopedic Institute, that's our specialty. Our services have been specifically tailored to provide the best orthopedic care in the region. Orthopedics is what we do. That's why Orthopedic Institute is the one to trust to keep your body in motion. You're listening to The Curtis Riggs Show, brought to you by Sioux Falls Specialty Hospital and by Orthopedic Institute on 98.1, 1230 Sports Radio, KWSN. Back to the show. Here's Rich Rosti. And this segment of The Curtis Riggs Show is the storm ticket giveaway brought to you by Lewis Pharmacy. Get, 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 get out, feel better. And after the interview with Jim Laurie, we'll take your third call at 336-1230. Four free tickets to the next home game. That's this Friday, June 8th, when the storm hosts the Iowa Barnstormers, and he is the Director of Corporate Partnerships with the Sioux Falls Storm, Jim Loria, joining us from his new home up in Minnetonka, Minnesota. Great <laughs> to have you with us again today, Jim. Oh, how are you, Rich? I'm doing very well. Well, it's kind of strange to hear you say that. <laughs> well, it, you know, the thing is, we've there's been somewhat kept a little bit quiet. It's been announced, but nothing real big, but uh, you're moving on. And uh, your wife had an opportunity, and you went with her to a Minneapolis area to take advantage of that. And I wanted to have you on to the show today as a guest, not just talking about the storm event coming up, because I want to take this opportunity to really thank you for all that you've done for the Sioux Falls storm and the Sioux Falls community and so many different individuals in the work that you have done. So that's why I wanted to have you on the show today. So kind, Rich. I appreciate that. Thank you. How long have you been with the storm? Well, this is my fourth year. It seems like a lot longer than that, but uh-huh. it's, it's the fourth season. You know, started in 2015, so it's been it's been a, an amazing time, Rich. I've so thoroughly enjoyed, you know, doing what I've done. Uh, and thanks to Todd Tryon, you know, when he first, you know, c- contacted me back in the, in the early 15 year and. Uh, but it's kind of when the Premier Center came about as well. So it kind of was timed into that. You know, Todd was looking for someone that would get involved in corporate partnerships. And and we kind of expanded on the community aspect of it all. And he was so wonderfully to support those concepts because it's a lot of work and it's a lot of donations and, and that. And you need the support of the person who writes the check. And he certainly has done everything 100 million percent and beyond to make it all work, you know. And so... It's been it's been an amazing just kind of like a job description created on its own if that makes sense you know and and it's just been fabulous to work with the business community which I've known because I was with the the hockey team the Sioux Falls Stampede you know we had started them back in '98 and so through those contacts that kind of carried with me that made it easy to transition and then the community part of it you know football plays into it even much better than than the other sports I've been with because you play almost every day or, or like multiple times a week and it's difficult to try to do something like where it becomes like a special event, if that makes sense, you uh-huh. know? And so these fundraisers became like an event, you know, within the game itself and, and it just grew. I mean, it just leaps and bounds, you know, and people have been calling and calling. The word got out you know, about the storm and all the fundraisers going on. And, and uh, so it's been a real fun, rewarding opportunity. There's no doubt about that. Well, one thing about it is that people don't realize that, you know, the lives that were touched because of this and the amount of dollars raised has gone directly uh, directly back into the community, into these very specific fundraisers. Do you have any idea, a number, as far as how many fundraisers have been sponsored by you and the Sioux Falls Storm over the years? Well, it's been, in the four years with the Storm, it's, it, easily it's over 30. There's no doubt about that. Okay. Uh, easily over 30. Last I checked, I thought we were about 30000 away from, uh, believe it or not, a half a million dollars, Rich. Because it, it, we, we just reached a little hairline over 400 a year ago. 
uh-huh. at the, after after the 17 season, and so it 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 probably will reach a half a million. Uh, definitely, if, if the Storm hosts the first playoff game, it'll reach a half a million, and because we do have a we do have a client lined up for that first playoff game already. You know, uh-huh. it's on a hold, waiting for that announcement. Should the team you know host the game? So no doubt in my mind, it'll reach a half a million in four years, which is absolutely amazing. Those are like major league numbers, let alone for a team that plays, you know, seven to eight home games. That's right. You know, in a golf outing every year. And, and you know, th- that's an amazing number. When you look back, it's an amazing number. $125,000 a year raised to go back into the community for these different projects, you know, for uh, Quinn Pasica Fund, for the Feeding South Dakota, for – all of the different uh, individuals that you've helped as far as expenses for them, you know, helping to cover expenses. Uh, it, it, do you have any idea how many people these fundraisers have affected in their lives positively? You know, for a lo- I know this for, a, for almost a fact, but it's a lot of we, – we actually focused more on the cause than we did the group, if that makes sense, you okay. know, because a lot of times – and I'm not disparaging any organization, but a lot of them have the ability, and you know, where they're in budgets yearly with a lot of groups and a lot of supporters. And so not that it's easy, don't get me wrong, but when you're an individual mom or dad and you're facing, like, consequential, I mean, just catastrophic numbers and, and you're like a family and you reach out, where do you go? And then and it's difficult because you can't get everybody to come forward and, and then to find a, an event like say Quinn Pasekas for example you know when, when Curtis Riggs had mentioned to me about the, Curtis was teaching at Roosevelt at the time and knew the mother who was a, a fellow colleague there and her daughter died at a very young age in fourth grade you know and all of a sudden here comes this fundraiser out of nowhere and it raises you know about $35,000 that's like a Super Bowl event in many mm-hmm. many ways you know and and it does it does ease a lot of lot of stress on a family, you know, and and we all grew close to Quinn's family, and that's where that scholarship fund, you know, came out of, you know, and things have just kind of been born out of different vines and veins, and you know, and it's just been crazy where a lot of this has gone, like the legacy where where like you, know, you may remember Rebecca uh, Spader, yes. You know, and when she died at a young age of leukemia, and her dad and mom were creating a legacy foundation for their daughter, and we had done a fundraiser for them that, you know, raised 19000 a couple of years ago, and Tony and Stephanie had contacted us and asked if we could help them, you know, kind of launch their daughter's foundation, and so we've done two of them with that particular family, and each one's raised, you know, about nineteen dollars to $21,000 per year, and that's a big, big chunk of change. To, to, yeah, now, they're donating all those funds. You know, they're, they're mm-hmm. picking children's charities. So when you look at what the storm raised, you have to even go further now and see how much, like the Pasika family now created a We're In It Together Forever foundation for their daughter. Oh, you know? fantastic. And, and they're doing things with it because of the money that started out of the storm fundraising events. They've taken that and they're now – donating those funds to other children's, you know, different groups and organizations. So, I mean, it goes well now beyond. I mean, it's been an amazing thing to see what it's, how it's helped, you know, launch other projects. Jim, it's been fantastic to have you a part of the Sioux Falls Storm organization. You have done so much. We cannot thank you enough. Neither can the community or the different fundraisers and the people that you have touched and affected in their lives. And we wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors, regardless of what they are or where they are. We know that you will continue to do that and be very special to somebody else down the road. Well, thank you, Rich. I'll be back June 8th, and I'll be back June 16th. I told Todd if we're hosting a home playoff game, I'll be back for that playoff game, too. So we're definitely finishing the season now. We just, we're in Minneapolis market. My wife's got that job, and... So she's doing a great – she's enjoying it. It's been wonderful for her, and so I'm kind of doing this one for her. We've always moved for me over the years. Now it's time for me to move for her. So. Well, thanks for it's joining the Sioux Falls Storm. That has been thank a fantastic Thank you, Rich. Move. I appreciate you as well. You've been a marvelous partner to work with. Jim Lauria, thank you so very much. And when we come back, we'll have more of the Curtis Riggs Show. This segment brought to you by Lewis Pharmacies. Get in, get out, feel better. 
Third call, 336-1230. Four free tickets to the game coming up on Friday against the Iowa Barnstormers. We'll be back right after this. When pe- Waiting to see a doctor. What's taking so long? It can take a while. I don't have time for this. Or longer than a while. We've been here two hours. Forever. Hello? What would you say if there was another option? Finally. Yes. It's about time. We're inclined to agree. It's about time for the best patient care. Sioux Falls Urgent Care. You're listening to The Curtis Riggs Show, brought to you by Sioux Falls Specialty Hospital and by Orthopedic Institute on 98.1, 1230 Sports Radio, KWSN. Back to the show. Here's Rich Rosti. And welcome back to the Curtis Riggs Show. As a reminder, Friday night and for the rest of the season, all Storm games are on our sister station, Keller News Talk 1320 and FM 107.9. Uh, pre-game show is going to start about 645. And again, you can hear the broadcast on Keller News Talk AM 1320 and FM 107.9. Also, if you want to see... The Curtis Riggs Show. Any game, any Curtis Riggs Show from the past, you can go to the Storm website, click on the podcast or the uh, social media, go down to the Stormcast. And those are courtesy of Boyer Trucks, celebrating 30 years of being employee-owned sales parts service. We keep you moving. Thank you to Boyer Trucks for archiving all of the Curtis Riggs Shows all season long. When we come back, we'll have the head coach of the Sioux Falls Storm. We'll talk about the Iowa Barnstormers. And this segment brought to you by Lewis Pharmacies, get in, get out, feel better. And when we go off to the air, take your third call, 336-1230, four free tickets for that game coming up on Friday. You don't want to miss that one. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Curtis Riggs Show, brought to you by Sioux Falls Specialty Hospital and by Orthopedic Institute on 98.1, 1230 Sports Radio, KWSN. Back to the show. Here's Rich Rosti. And the game preview brought to you by Good Sense Deli Fresh Subs. And they're located at 917 South Cliff Avenue in Sioux Falls. Sliced fresh, baked fresh, made fresh. Come see what fresh really is at Good Sense Deli Fresh Subs. And he is the head coach of the Sioux Falls Storm, Curtis Riggs. Coach, Iowa Barnstormers coming to town on Friday night. There's a ton of things we could talk about as far as Iowa's concerned. I've got a few things written down. What's the one thing... Of the at least, give, I'll give you two things. Drew Powell, who is an amazing athlete, great quarterback, possible MVP of the le- league, or their defense that only gives up about 35 points a game. You know, where they've really made a, a change is <clears throat> their defensive line. Um, they took their nose guard and moved him to defensive end. And he, he's, he still will occasionally go in and play nose guard a little bit, but um, he he's really been a, a Keith Jones he he has been a great player for them defensively and and I think he's the difference maker I, I think BJ Butler has been great for him but he's uh, Jones is one that can just really uh, collapse things and he's much faster than he looks for a big guy he can really move well and I think the the play with the guys up front has really been the difference for their defense and hotel- Keith Jones 6'1 310 out of University of Tennessee. And uh, he was with the team last year. He had in seven games, he had eight, eight tackles and two sacks last year. Uh, this year, uh, Keith Jones, eight and a half tackles for loss, three and a half sacks on the year. Plus, he's got a couple of three broken passes, so the guy can jump too. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a lot of jumping, more just getting a push and getting his hands up. Now, B.J. Butler uh, gets a lot of passes that he knocks down. And then, you know, against Arizona, he played both ways just about the entire game. He played the fullback spot for them and, and was out there just about every snap on defense, too. So when you look at this ball club, and they have so many different things going for them, how do you game plan for a team that can do so many different things? Well, I, I think you, you try to take away some of the things that they do well and um, – you know, try to be sound. Don't make mistakes. I think the biggest thing is you got to tackle. I, I think when you watch, there's just so many missed tackles, especially with Drew. Uh, you have collectively got to get there. You can't go for, you know, just the big knockout hit where you don't try to wrap up. You have got to 
go through his legs. You got to wrap up, and your your teammates got to get there and help you get him down to the ground. Yeah, Powell, six foot three, two hundred and twenty pounder out of Livingstone College. Uh, looking at the statistics, and I've been kind of looking at this this year more than I have in other years. I talked to you about this on several occasions, talking about the third quarter has been uh, a struggle at times, although it wasn't last week. But the two quarters in this game coming up that I think that might be interesting is the second quarter, which is the best quarter for the Sioux Falls Storm because you outscore your opponent 72 points in that second quarter. Iowa only outscores their opponents in the second quarter by 14. However, Iowa has really a great fourth quarter. They outscore their opponents by 54 points to Storm 31. Those will be two very interesting quarters, in my opinion, just from a stat perspective. Uh, how do you look at it? Well, I, I, I look at it as each drive, drive by drive. You know, what are we going to do? Can we get off to a good start is a big key. Uh-huh. You know, the last time we played them, we were down 21 nothing. And we hadn't shown a glimmer of anything good uh, in any facets of the game. So I, I think coming out and um, just just being solid, make them have to earn everything on offense and uh, us on offense being sharp, really getting after them up front, uh, having a good mix, a good balance and keeping them off balance with uh, what they're trying to do defensively. I think that's the key word, balance is the, the thing that you don't get too hot or too cold on, in any particular area and that you maintain things at a higher level. And I think that's probably harder to defend against a team that is up and down because you have that down opportunity to make a big play. Yeah, and, and they will give up big plays. But, you know, one thing, they're, they're good against the run. I think they're number one against the run. Um, and I think we're number one against the pass. Uh, defensively and you know there's just there's a lot of similarities but um, you know the the difference is 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 the big plays that Drew makes and you're right a lot of those big plays are in the fourth quarter and a lot of those have been games where you know he finds a way to to make a big play and and get them the victory you know you talk about preparing your team you talk about preparing your team, and the thing about it is that you, you can put pressure on. This is a huge game. This is what's going to happen. This is all of the other different types of uh, side effects of it. How's, what's your philosophy ab- about going there or just focusing on what you do to do better or you know, putting the added influence of the level of the game? Well, I, I don't think you want to try to deceive your players. I mean, the guys know, and I don't think it's about, you know, the added pressure of this game. I think it's more about how embarrassing uh, we were, you know, the beginning of that game, mm-hmm. last time we played them, how we're down 21 nothing, and then we find a way to fight to get back in it and take the lead even, and then we, we just can't finish. And, um I think that more than anything else has the guys very motivated about um, playing Iowa. I, you know, things will happen with the rest of the regular season and wherever the playoffs may end up. I, I don't think that's anything. You, we just we want to win, mm-hmm. and, you know, it, it'll take us where we need to be, and hopefully we can just keep winning. That's the bottom line. Half of the stuff that I talk about is for the fans anyway, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know everyone's trying to figure out what is the formula. Uh, you, you know, you probably helped quite a few, but you probably made it worse for quite a few. I hope so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, we'll, cool. we'll see what happens. Coach, we'll talk to you on Friday before the game. All right. Thank you, Rich. He is the head coach. This is the Good Sense Deli Fresh sub segment, 917 South Cliff Avenue. We'll be back and wrap things up. Canary's coming up. At 6.55, back right after this. The Sheraton Sioux Falls Hotel is... Hey guys, Bellator lightweight champion Michael Chandler here. I'm here at one of my favorite places in the entire world, the wrestling room. But if there's one thing we know about wrestling rooms, they can get extremely dirty. We're talking skin infections, we're talking about funk, we're talking about smelly armpits, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. So, my friends at Pure and Clean Sports came up with an awesome solution. Spray it right on your skin, wipe it off, Smells great, keeps you clean from the time you leave the mats to the time you can get home and shower. Not only is it the greatest skin defense in the entire world, it's the safest. Check them out, pureandcleansports.com.
breathe easier when you have your ducks cleaned by Waterbury. Call us today. Thanks for being a part of the Curtis Riggs Show. Coming up next, Canaries Baseball. Third caller, 336-1230. Lewis Pharmacies, get in, get out, feel better. Free tickets for the game coming up on Friday. Thanks for being a part of the Curtis Riggs Show. Have yourself a great evening. Good night, everybody.